starts now. Welcome into Newswatch 12 at 5. I'm Nate Myhock. A 10-year-old girl from Chippewa Falls who was reported missing by her father last night has been found dead. The body of Ileana Peters was found in a wooded area this morning. Police say the bicycle she was riding was located last night. According to her father, she had been visiting her aunt and did not return home. She had been reported missing around 9 p.m. last night. Lily's father reported that she had not returned home from a visit from her aunt's house at 400, in the 400 block of North Grove Street. Officers later located a bicycle in the woods near the walking trail between the end of North Grove Street and the Line of Coolsbury parking lot. Numerous agencies and resources were called to assist with the search for Lily. At about 9.15 this morning, a body was located in the wooded area near the walking trail. The Chippewa County Coroner's Office has now confirmed that this is the body of Lily Peters. At this point, we are considering this a homicide investigation. According to the police chief, no one is in custody, but as he mentioned, they are treating the case as a homicide. And switching gears a little bit now, our chief meteorologist Jeff Weller joining us live in studio. Jeff, what can we expect to see the rest of this week? Well, lots of cloud cover out there now and cold temperatures tonight with lows down near 25. Tomorrow we may not get above freezing, followed by a slow recovery getting in here Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Out there now, though, an upper level low is across the Great Lakes. And the problem is there are some little areas of energy within this low that could trigger a couple light areas of drizzle and some snow flurries tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. If any accumulation will be little to minor, uh, but still a little bit of light snow is back in the forecast for tonight into tomorrow. All right, temperatures can't support snow quite yet, but it will drop below freezing tonight. Right now we're hanging out in the 30s. Keep in mind the average high is 57 this time of the year and looking for warmer temperatures. There they are off to the west of us, but well off to the west. Those will stay there for now. We'll be in the 50s though by the end of the week. Our forecast though tonight though is Cloudy skies and a couple of flurries out there with low temperatures down near 25. Your full forecast is coming up, Nate. Thank you, Jeff. Congressman Tom Tiffany was in Rothschild today to announce his intention to seek re-election for Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District seat. Speaking to supporters, constituents, and members of the press, Tiffany says he's always fought for and wishes to continue fighting for the voters who elected him for everyone in northern and western Wisconsin to restore that freedom, liberty, and opportunity and bring control back to states, local communities, and in particular, the citizens of the United States. Tiffany was elected in a spring 2020 race beating Democrat Trisha Zunker. He later won a rematch of that same race in the fall of 2020. Tiffany says this year's race will be about how Republicans can govern better than Democrats to fix the issues that he sees as current problems. Record crime, record illegal immigration, record inflation, record high energy prices, record deficits. We know what the problems are. We're going to deliver the uh, message to the people of Wisconsin and to the people of America that there is a better way. Tiffany also went on to answer questions from local media where he remarked that voters should treat this election as a referendum on President Joe Biden. Tiffany is the in, uh, incumbent for the November congressional election. Meanwhile, no Democrats have announced a run at this time. A New York judge has held former President Donald Trump in contempt of court today. They say it's for failing to comply with a subpoena for business documents related to an investigation by the state attorney general's office. Trump will have to pay $10,000 per day for as long as he fails to comply with the subpoena. The ruling came after a two plus hour hearing. The court is investigating the Trump organization over allegations that it improperly manipulated the stated values of various real estate assets to obtain more favorable financial terms for loans and insurance coverage. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation's DMV is about to become the first to update its data system to share all driver records with other states electronically. The process began on April 10th and its goal is to move the system from paper to entirely electronic. Right now, all 50 states send CDL data electronically, but with the upgrade, Wisconsin would become the first to ever do so for regular drivers. This new process is another step in Wisconsin DMV's efforts to improve its efficiency and customer service by automating manual processes. 
Fentanyl has impacted people all over the country. The CDC says the drug is responsible for an estimated 100,000 overdose deaths per, per year in the past year. Newswatch 12's Muhammad Abdul Kawi explains how you can stay safe. If you just get a little bit of it, you could die. According to the CDC, fentanyl is a powerful synthetic drug that is similar to morphine and heroin, but is 50 to 100 times more effective. The problem is a lot of the fentanyl that we're seeing right now is coming up through the border um, and it is very, it's not regulated by anybody. Terry Hook is the captain of the investigation division at the Oneida County Sheriff's Office. She has seen the effect of the dangerous drug at first hand. We had more people die last year from overdoses on fentanyl than we did, you know, any, any deaths from, even from car accidents. Methamphetamine is already a big issue in Wisconsin. Plus, there have been instances of fentanyl being mixed in methamphetamine. It's highly addictive, and that is where we're finding people getting this, this combination with meth and fentanyl. There's only one thing that can help out with a fentanyl overdose, and it's called naloxone. Giving naloxone to someone who has overdosed restores no more breathing by reversing the effects of opioids. Like all of the ambulances all run with Narcan or naloxone because this is the um, antidote to overdosing off of these types of drugs. Not 100%, but it can help. And Terry says calling for help is the best thing you could do if you see somebody overdosing. So if you find somebody passed out and you don't know why they're passed out, yes, call 911. Don't wait too long, that's the thing. If you wait too long, we can't help. Reporting in Rhinelander, Muhammad Abdul Kawi, Newswatch 12. If you're at all concerned about your own or someone else's misuse of drugs, you can contact the Addiction and Mental Health 24-hour helpline at 866-332-232. PFAS is a major issue for many communities in the Northwoods. We'll tell you how researchers from UW-Madison are hoping to find a better solution. That's After Weather with Jeff right here on Newswatch 12. Angus beef, melty Swiss, and bacon between toasted sourdough. Oh, yeah. The Frisco Angus Burger is for those who know an icon when they see one. Because flavor like this is always in style. Bite into the Frisco Angus Burger, part of the Frisco menu only at Hardee's. It's time to update your home with a fresh paint color and new flooring from Menards. DuraClean is an interior paint and primer in one that's washable, scrubbable, and stain resistant. Get a gallon of interior flat paint for $19.48 after 11% rebate. Finish your update with super fast vinyl plank flooring. It's waterproof and available in wood grain and tile look styles. Hurry into Menards to get 11% off all super fast vinyl plank flooring. Save big money at Menards. Hello, this is Eric from Fireside Supper Club, located on County K, just west of Rylander on Town Line Lake. Providing you with an enjoyable and relaxing dining experience is very important to us. Our rustic decor and beautiful view combine for a unique and comforting cabin-like feel. We offer a diverse menu, Friday fish fry, Saturday prime rib, and specialized in steak, seafood, ribs, poultry, and more. Plus, with every entree, you get soup, salad, crackers, rolls, and mini muffins. So come visit us tonight for dinner and let us do all the cooking and dishes. Follow us on Facebook, Friends, Family, Fireside. Do you have sleep apnea, struggling with your CPAP? Ditch the mask and let New Horizons Sleep Solutions help you achieve your best night's sleep. Dr. James Block is your expert in oral appliance therapy, a simple, comfortable treatment for snoring and sleep apnea. If you have a CPAP machine that you're struggling to use, consider oral appliance therapy to improve your sleep and protect your health. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation appointment and wake up to a New Horizon in sleep apnea treatment. With ham, melty cheese, and an egg on toasted sourdough. Oof. The recipe for standing out is keeping things simple. Making this breakfast your most iconic meal of the day. Bite into the Frisco breakfast sandwich, part of the Frisco menu only at Hardee's. It's Monday evening. Tough to find any sunshine out there today. We tried, but nope, just didn't happen. A couple of snow flurries and light drizzle areas as well. That'll be the case again tonight and tomorrow before we get some sunshine back in here on Wednesday with highs Wednesday back up near 50. We got to get there first though. So for tonight, we're going to have lows down near 25. Right now it's 38 in Rhinelander with a northwest breeze at 9, making it feel like 31. Over in Wausau, 42 for you, a west wind at 7 or 14. 
making it feel like mid 30s. So overall, you know, this is not what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, average high being 57. Nobody is doing that today. Uh, basically low, mid, upper 30s across the area with a couple low 40s in there as well. But overall, well below average temperatures today and it's going to get worse before it gets better tomorrow. A couple of you may not even break freezing during the afternoon. And again, just for giggles here, the average high being 57, the average low now 32, the record low 19. We're not going to do that tonight, but the record high being 84. Wouldn't that be nice? And the sun sets later on at 757, one of my favorite airplanes. So here we go. Going forward, look at this. 32 tomorrow is the cold day. All right, we'll get through it. 47 for Wednesday and Thursday, then back in the 50s. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, low 50s, but we'll take it. Uh, and then back in probably under 50 again on Monday, too. And the long-range trend, I know this is probably not what you want to see, but here we go. The first week of May, uh, May 1 through the 7th or so, well below average temperatures across the Great Lakes, Northern Plains, so it should keep us basically in the 50s and maybe a couple low 60s in there. Uh, but if you can, in, this, in the category of, it can always be worse, here's a live look right now at the South Pole Research Station, where the temperature is about 47 degrees below zero, and it's about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's still dark. <laughs> Here we go. So it can get worse, right? But for us, lots of cloud cover currently, and within this cloud cover, there's a big upper level low in here, but in that low, there's some pieces of energy, and that's going to give us a chance for some drizzle and light snow flurry action tonight, and probably about midday tomorrow, get some more flurries across the region. Again, this is not going to be a big snow. However, a couple of you, North Gogebic Range, on Tanagan, some lake enhanced snow tomorrow could give that area an inch or two. The rest of us, though, north of Highway 8, most likely an inch or less on grassy areas. This will melt on contact with road surfaces tomorrow if it does fall. So our forecast then tonight, though, is cloudy and just cold. A couple of flurries out there, lows down near 25 with that northwest breeze. For tomorrow, all right, so cloudy and cold again. Those flurries, especially through the afternoon, with highs trying to get above freezing and we might do it with that northwest breeze and then looking ahead your seven day forecast by northwest furniture and mattress shows tomorrow just a mess wednesday 47 same thing for thursday a little rain shower on thursday followed by improvement over the weekend friday and saturday back in the 50s with some sunshine nate thank you jeff the university of wisconsin stevens point has a brand new head football coach Luke Vinay comes to point from UW Oshkosh, where he coached for 19 years, spending the last 14 as a full-time assistant. At today's press conference, Vinay talked about how his heart will always have a connection to his past in Oshkosh, but he's ready to fall in love with Stevens Point in his many years to come. And as I walked through the, the campus, you know, I came here going, I don't know. And as I walked through, I said, okay, this is the job that I want to do, and hopefully if it gets offered me, I'm going to say, heck yeah, and let's get the ball rolling on it. Vinay continued saying it's a privilege to become head coach for Point and being a part of the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, which has traditionally been known as one of the top college conferences in the country. I have the chance to be the head football coach at one of the schools in this conference. There's only eight people in the nation who can say that, and uh, I, I take that, I don't take that lightly. The University of Stevens Point has a long football tradition with over 100 seasons played since their founding. Over the past 34 years, Vinay is only the fourth head coach of the program. Twitter is reportedly nearing a deal to let Elon Musk buy out their company. The news comes 11 days after the Tesla and SpaceX CEO shot to the industry by offering to buy Twitter in a deal that values the social media giant at more than $41 billion. A source familiar with the deal says Twitter's board met on Sunday to evaluate Musk's offer to buy all the shares that he does not own. Less than a month ago, Musk revealed that he had taken a more than 9% stake in the company. If the board approves, the deal would put the world's richest man in charge of one of the world's most influential social media platforms. The world's oldest person died at the age of 119 last week. Kane Tanaka was born on January 2nd, 1903, and died on April 19th. In a tweet earlier this month, her family said she had been sick and, quote, in and out of the hospital. Japan's Ministry of Health said the Japanese woman was certified by the Guinness World Records as the world's oldest person. Tanaka was supposed to take part in the Olympic torch relay at the postponed 2020 Summer Olympics, but she did not attend over concerns of COVID-19. 
EW Madison researchers have been work, doing work at the Rhinelander Airport since last summer. They are studying the soil and surrounding groundwater since the finding of PFAS made headlines. In their latest trip, they took samples from new areas near wells 7 and 8. It's a part of their study at how PFAS spreads to surrounding areas. These researchers say they have found it's dependent on the landscape of the region. We use them in experiments where we spike it with PFAS and we see how it moves through that soil and what it sticks to and how long it stays in the soil before it moves uh, along. A recently passed infrastructure package includes $1.6 million designated for the PFAS issue here in Rhinelander. One of the possible uses of that money is to remediate the PFAS right here in the ground before it ever even hits the wells and moves away from this area. They expect to finalize this stage of their research in four to six weeks. Saturday was one of the most violent days of the year so far in Milwaukee. Police in the city said they responded to eight different shootings. And as Jessica Madhuka reports, police say that two of those shootings were deadly. Family and friends released balloons into the sky for 23-year-old LaShant Stewart, who they identify as the young man who was shot and killed near 27th and Burleigh Saturday at around 8.15 p.m. He was going to become a father soon, his life taken before ever getting to meet his baby. LaShant's mother is not ready to go on camera, but shared that her son was working as a security guard at the gas station when the shooting happened. No one is in custody for his death. Just, it's just too much. Vaughn Mays and his organization, Community Task Force Milwaukee, supporting the family at a vigil where the crime happened. People are still not in a good place, uh, mentally, emotionally. Um, our city is not in a good place. Two hours before LaShant was killed and less than three miles away, a 19-year-old woman was fatally shot. A suspect is in custody. This was the scene from 66 in Lisbon. This just, you know, call for us to do more. Us as the residents, the city, the citizens, the organizations, the leadership, um, we all need to do more and we all need to do better. And the, the, the honest is on us how long this will last. Milwaukee is on pace to break another record when it comes to homicides. Each of the past two years, the city has broken previous records. As inflation continues to cause prices to rise, food pantries are struggling to keep their costs low. But how do local food pantries plan to deal with rising prices? We'll explain after the break. In the military, we call it dereliction of duty. Ron Johnson is supposed to serve Wisconsin. Instead, he served himself. An investigation found Ron Johnson pushed through a special tax loophole that benefited his own family's business. Then he cashed out of the company for $5 million. Ron Johnson has doubled his wealth since taking office. That's a dereliction of duty. Tell Ron Johnson to stop passing tax laws that benefit himself. Saturday, April 30th, the Wisconsin Department of Justice will be holding a free prescription drug take-back event. If you have unused or unwanted medications, ointments, patches, non-aerosol sprays, inhalers, vials, or pet medication, clean out your cabinets. Don't let your old medication fall into the wrong hands by disposing of unused or unwanted medications properly. For more information on locations and accepted items, go to doseofrealitywi.gov. This information is brought to you by the Human Service Center of Forest, Vilas, and Oneida County. Roof warranties are all about trust. Your trust in GAF, a time-tested company, and our trust in our master elite contractors. They're trained, licensed, insured, and only they can offer our best warranties. Call Oneida Roofing today. Our local shelters have lots of furry friends in need of loving homes. Watch News Watch 12 today, every Friday morning, to see a new cuddly cat or dog ready for you to adopt. Homeward Bound on News Watch 12 today is sponsored by Paws and Claws. Think premium can't be capable? Think again. Introducing the first ever AT4 lineup. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on these GMC models. Visit your North Central Wisconsin GMC dealer. 
Four crew members of the first all-private mission to the International Space Station are back safely. The SpaceX crew Dragon capsule splashed down into the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida on Monday afternoon. Their mission, dubbed AX-1, launched on April 8th. It was scheduled for 10 days, but dragged on a week longer than expected due to weather delays. On Sunday night, the capsule detached from the space station, and overnight, the, clue, the crew flew through orbit to gradually reduce their altitude. Rescue crews were waiting to haul it out of the ocean and onto a special boat where they arrived safely. A member of the Lake Superior Chippewa's Lac de Flambeau Band is revealing what his summer plans are for his What We Can Learn From a Wigwam event. Master artist Wayne Valer is a 2020 recipient of the National Endowment for the Arts National Heritage Fellowship that is considered the nation's highest honor awarded to those who keep folk and traditional arts alive. Wayne and his apprentices will lead students of all ages in harvesting materials from the local woodlands and constructing a summer wigwam in the courtyard of the warehouse in Eagle River. A lot of families and individuals struggle with food insecurity, but things have been even more challenging since inflation has increased. Newswatch Charles Morgan Johnson tells us how one local food pantry is doing after their reopening. After over two years of only curbside pickup, the Rhinelander area food pantry is back open. Jane Matowski couldn't be more excited. It's a treat for us and it's a treat for the customers. But a lot has changed over those two years, especially with customers. We have a lot of people that have come in since COVID who have never been in the store. Matowski partially blames inflation for the increase in new faces. It's been a struggle I, and it's actually i think almost getting worse again now jane says inflation has hit pretty much every product they have here at the pantry but specifically sugar-free and gluten-free items like this the bureau of labor statistics reports inflation for groceries raised almost four percent this year already the usda predicts even higher prices by the end of 2022 it's hard for people we are seeing more people coming back and i'm sure it's a lot of it is because of that we've had people coming back that haven't been here in years the food pantry still gets some funding from feeding america and government programs and of course volunteers which executive director Guy Hansen says they could use more of. We can always use support from the community, either food or money, to keep us rolling. But uh, we're in, we're doing okay at this point. And throughout those two years with exclusively curbside pickup, the food pantry learned a lot too. Like how to organize online ordering in the best way possible. It did get us started on online ordering which is a good thing because it's much better when you can come in and choose what you want. One thing that didn't change in the past two years is the food pantry's goal, which is to provide food security to everyone in the community. Our customers are happy. Our volunteers are happy. We're happy to be open again. Reporting for Newswatch 12 and Rhinelander, I'm Morgan Johnson. And I walked right into U.S. Cellular and I said I want to choose any phone in here for free. What did he say? He's unsure. Really nice guy. I had my pick of any phone from any brand, free, even the newest ones. Wow. Yeah. You got the big screen? Yeah. Big storage? Yeah. Fits in your pocket? Fits in my pocket. You know, it's a big phone, and that's what I wanted, and I got, I got what I wanted. At U.S. Cellular, we put you first. So choose any phone free. Plus, get unlimited data for just $30 a month. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Get your hands! Tonight, it's the live semifinals, and which fan favorite will be saved? I love that song. That's catchy as heck. American Song Contest, live tonight on NBC. I know what comes next, and it cannot be stopped. The president is in New York. With the information we have, none of us are safe. Hello, Mr. President. The end game tonight on NBC. Some numbers are inspiring. Some playful. Some worth celebrating. After an accident, there's one critical number that helps you get your life back by factoring in your needs for today and tomorrow. That's where Habish Habish and Rotier's numbers really add up. With over 90 years of client successes and 13 offices to help you wherever you are, no other personal injury law firm is better suited to get the amount that's right for you. Everything we love about Wisconsin is under attack. As an Army commander, I serve God, family, and country. But the media, 
they say none of that matters anymore. When I was a kid, every day at school, I took the pledge. In the service, I took an oath. But today, people take a knee. When I was nine years old, my dad handed me a shovel and put me to work. Nowadays, people get paid to sit on the couch. And back then, you called somebody lazy, it was a huge insult. But today, you get a pronoun wrong, and the liberals want your head. I'm Tim Michaels. The radical left, they're destroying everything we love about America. And too many establishment Republicans, they're along for the ride. I'm not some career politician. I'm a self-made businessman who doesn't give a rip about the special interests or their money. I'm Tim Michaels. I'm running for governor to turn Madison upside down and take back the freedoms that make Wisconsin great. Tim Michaels for governor. He'll turn Madison upside down. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Sur Service is celebrating what they hope is going to be a beautiful future for an endangered species. They posted uh, this reveal of a new litter of red wolf pups on Facebook. Oh. Six pups, four girls, two boys. Get this, Jeff. It is the first wild-born litter of red wolves since 2018. Really? Yeah. That's so cool. It is really cool. They're cute, too. They don't look really red yet, but I would assume they... they and they're going to get big and, you know, know, do what wolves do. And All right, so yeah. for us, you know, those wolves would like it outside right now with temperatures kind of cool in the 30s yes. today. Uh, there's a little bit of flurry action going to happen tonight, too, as there's just a disturbance across the Great Lakes that could give us some light snow. Again, not a lot of snow, probably flurries. It won't accumulate, uh, except on grassy areas. But for right now, temperatures in the 30s, we should be in the 50s here during the peak daytime heating. There's that low across the Great Lakes, not moving quickly at all. The back edge of the clouds are across the Dakotas. That will be in here on Tuesday uh, night into Wednesday. And then until then, though, kind of cool tomorrow with highs only in the low 30s. Do you think they would let us adopt one of those red wolves and raise it safely? Of course. I think, I, I, no. <laughs> no. If we ask nicely, maybe. Um, please. Can Thank you. Please? Please? We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock. <laughs>